I was nine years old, and I had a series of complications with my ear. But I remember the surgeon explaining to me about a prosthesis that would restore my hearing. Given the news, I wasn't worried about the complications of the surgery, but I was fascinated by the science behind it. And thinking back to this experience, I wanted to start a research project with the hopes that one day I could contribute to society much the same way these doctors, surgeons, and scientists are helping people on a daily basis by combining science and technology with medicine. I was 14 years old, and I saw an awareness campaign for Alzheimer's disease. At the time, I didn't know what the disease was, so I wanted to find out about it. Alzheimer's disease affects over 47 million people worldwide, but there exist no drugs to stop or even slow down the progression of this disease. More than that, less than 50% of patients receive a diagnosis within their lifetime. So I wanted to do something about this lack of an effective diagnostic system, and I was curious as to whether I could find a better solution. So I read medical journals and met with professors to learn about the biochemistry of the disease so that I could be a part of the fight against it. When I was 15 years old, I created a complex, which was an antibody combined with a nanoparticle that could enter the brain, target a toxic protein, and then show up on an MRI and near-infrared scan. The complex had diagnostic properties, but it also had therapeutic properties. By preventing neural damage and increasing cellular viability, something I wasn't expecting. Doing this entire research was incredible and invigorating, but I didn't do it for grades or for the sake of my curriculum, but instead out of curiosity. Sure, it was difficult getting professors to take me seriously at first, but the ideas themselves were up to me, and they were only limited by my imagination. I think what's so great about science is it's so diverse, but it still remains so interlinked. Some of the core concepts I was using within my Alzheimer's research could easily be translated into cancer research. When I was working with Alzheimer's, there was an adjacent laboratory who were working with cancer. And I was curious as to what they were doing, so I wanted to find out more. I created a new method to treat a particular form of breast cancer. Cancer is a cruel and complex disease, but triple negative breast cancer isn't responsive to many drugs because it lacks the receptors upon which most drugs work on. However, last year, Another research team found out that triple negative breast cancer comes from two different types of cells. One cell line which is responsive to most other drugs, and another cell line that isn't responsive to many drugs at all. So creating new drugs to treat this unresponsive form of cancer has been a challenge. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted to see whether I could change the unresponsive form of triple negative breast cancer into a form of cancer we can treat with existing drugs. In essence, I didn't change the drug, I changed the cancer. Since then, I've been exploring whether my Alzheimer's research could be applied to other diseases like Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, and ALS. And I'm curious as to whether the concept of changing the cancer and not the drug could be applied to other forms of cancer, not only breast cancer. A lot of people think that just because I do this research, I'm somehow different to friends. Um, my friends enjoy playing sport, so do I. My friends also enjoy traveling the world, so do I. Did you guys see any differences? Well, the answer was no. Um, and that's because there isn't any. I like doing things other 16-year-olds like to do. But I also wanted to do something that fascinated me. 
And for me, that happened to be neuroscience. I, as well as many other students across the world, may have promising ideas, but what we don't have are the facilities or resources required to execute them. I had to email 54 different laboratories before I got one positive response months later. I had no prior experience with research, and whilst that in itself is a significant drawback, I think it possesses an understated significance. As inexperienced students, we don't know what's possible or what's impossible. So we're not afraid of exploring new ideas and challenging preconceptions in the hopes of finding something new. Curiosity was essential for me to have become interested in my research and started doing what I like doing. But this is the easy part, right? Because curiosity is present within each and every one of us. When we're all young, we've always asked questions and wondered about our surroundings. Um, my dad enjoys calling me annoying, and he loves to tell me to go away because I would irritate him with a seemingly endless number of questions. But it goes to demonstrate an intrinsic sense of inquisitiveness. Curiosity is also something that cannot be taken away. There are 160 million teenagers in India and over 1.2 billion teenagers across the world. And if society listened to those teenagers and allowed us to explore our interests, imagine what we could accomplish and how much we could change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 1.2 billion untapped teenage minds full of curiosity and potentially world-changing ideas. And we're ready to share our ideas as long as you guys are ready to give us the chance. Thank you.